Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about grids. Now, Sketch has some interesting options compared to some other applications for what types of grids you'll be using. Now, we can go ahead and click View up top right here, and we can see we have the option to hide pixels, hide rulers, and then right down here we have Show Grid or Show Layout, and then we have Grid Settings. So let's click Show Grid first and you'll see this fairly standard looking grid and you'll notice that um, in this instance it's lining up with every other slash in the rulers. If we zoom in it's every fourth and likewise continues to go. Uh, so this is our grid here um, and this maybe is what you're used to. We have some thicker lines every uh, 200 pixels and that's great. Um, things work really well for that. We even have some nice little snapping going on. It's sort of uh, locking this into that line of the grid. And that's that's great. Um, but what else do we have? Let's click grid settings. And you'll see that we have a grid block size of 20 pixels, thick lines every 10 blocks. So we can go ahead and modify this to say we want double the um, the frequency of those lines. And now you can see that the grid instantly updates and we now have this uh, grid that shows every 10 pixels. So again, this is really great for this type of grid, but let's say you're working on a website and a lot of websites these days are built in uh, grid frameworks where they have columns and gutters and things like that. So they have the option to use a show layout. So when we click show layout, what we have instead of our normal grid is we actually have a web style grid uh, where we have columns and gutters and things that you'd be used to for um, maybe whatever grid framework that you're working in. And so you might be thinking, great, but this isn't the grid I need. Uh, well, you can actually modify these grid within the grid settings again, and you're gonna have a ton of options. Notice how this is, it's uh, default as the 960 grid width with 12 columns. However, you can change the amount of columns to be whatever you need. And we have the grid width and, or the gutter width and the column width. Now these are going to be in sync with one another. So you'll notice as I'm making the columns wider, the uh, the gutters are becoming more narrow. Now we can also even add in rows just like that and we now have a gutter and row height as well. And we can choose to draw all of the horizontal lines that way if you want to have like your paragraph spacing or something like that you can set that all up here and we can change those heights really easily. Now if there's a grid that you're using all the time let's say you have like a 1440 uh, let's say 16 column grid um, and let me get back into settings here uh, I have these column widths I'm gonna go with 20 pixel gutters just like that this is a grid that maybe you use all the time so let's go ahead and make this our default next time you create a new document it's going to start with this grid so that's fantastic we now have this web style grid you can imagine how this would work on a website especially if you used any of these grid frameworks as a front-end developer or if you are a uh, developer yourself you know you've probably familiar with coming across this style of grid that's great, but let's say you're working on a document that had multiple grids, or maybe the grid framework is changing per layout. Maybe you have a mall, uh, like a mobile layout that uses a two column grid or something, and or four column grid or whatever, but basically you want to make sure that you have both of those grids. Well, we can always come in here and make an artboard like we did before. And you'll notice what's happening is that our grid settings are applied to this particular artboard. And that's fantastic, but let's go ahead and make a second artboard. What we see here is that now our, our grid is being shown on the second artboard and it's really whichever artboard we have in focus. But what happens if we change this grid? So let's say grid settings and let's say we want this now to be um, only 400 pixels wide and we come back here 
and we only want this to be four columns. Okay, actually let's go bigger because it looks like we're maybe closer to 600 pixels wide for our artboard. And again, I want to have 20 pixel gutters and it's going to adjust the column size for me. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice our second artboard over here. Perhaps this is our mobile or our tablet layout. I guess at 600 pixels, it's more of a tablet layout. Uh, we have this second artboard over here. Now, when we click back to our first artboard, uh, we do that by selecting, uh, you can do that by selecting the title up here or by the title in the menu or the layer bar you'll notice that Artboard 1 retains its grid settings. So Artboard 2 has these grid settings where we have four columns with 20 pixels uh, uh, gutters over the course of 600. And then here we have a 16 column grid that's 1440 wide. So the grid settings here are are based on the artboard itself. And that's awesome because now you can have every single artboard with the exact grid that your developers are using. So perhaps, you know, you can have your your mobile, your tablet, your your total responsive design in one document with the correct grid framework for each artboard. And then combined with textiles, I mean that's that's a great workflow for designing for web. Cool, so you now should have the ability to adjust your grids and change them per artboard and set up a layout style column web grid or the standard grid. And you should be able to get working building some awesome cool stuff. So let us know what kind of grid settings you're using in your projects. What are the standard grids that you go to when you're starting a new project, whether it's for web, print, whatever. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Facebook, Twitter, uh, and anywhere. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Basically, we have lots of content coming all the time, and we would love for you to keep watching. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.